Oh, almost didn't see you there. Who's ready to talk some fashion history and make some culottes? Now, before making this video, I was asking around to some friends and family to see what they thought, and I was like, I'm gonna make a video about culottes. And they were like, what are culottes? Or alternately, oh God, are people wearing those again? And I don't know about the general population because I haven't seen people in a hot minute, but I do know that this people is wearing them and we are also gonna be sewing some today. And as I was looking into it, I was like, wow, the history of culottes is a lot more interesting than I expected it to be, which was zero interesting. So I'm also going to talk to you about the complex history of culottes, why they were hated in the past, and why they continue to be hated in the present. So for this video, instead of starting at the origin of culottes and making our way to the present, we're gonna have a sort of flashback situation. We're gonna start in the present, make our way back to the beginning, and then work our way back to the present. Now, just for reference, when I say culottes, I am referring to a type of pants that mimics the way a skirt looks by having really wide legs. Um, sometimes these legs can be paneled so it looks even more like a skirt, but in this case, mostly just pants with wide legs. That's what I'm talking about. Now, why do people hate culottes so much? Well, I wouldn't classify culottes as a type of garment that is accommodating or forgiving. Uh, like, style and cut-wise, I would classify them as the capris of skirts. They're like the skirt pants version of someone who gets into PTA drama. So the hate's kind of justified. Um, but I love an underdog, and also I needed something new to sew, and I had this pattern laying around. So we're going to be sewing some today. Now, as a person who is short and has sturdy ankles, um, a mid-calf length thing isn't that great for me. It gives me a kind of Gumby-esque figure, but I'll do anything for love. And I try to negate those stubbifying and shortening characteristics with some black tights and gratuitously high heels. Now, if that's not your steez, you can also focus more on a high-waisted version of culottes that kind of shortens your torso down and lengthens your legs. Or, if those two things aren't possible, like perhaps because your fabric's really heavy and really slinky at the same time, and it's already not a color that's flattering on you, and if you made pants out of it, it would hang on your legs in the worst way possible, you can make shorts. All right, before we actually get started, I need to get something off my chest. As I was researching for this, I found something called demi-denim, and it's atrocious. It's worse than Adam Sandler's pant choices and jean skirts with jeans underneath combined. It's like the terrible cursed love child of Jinko jeans and jorts. And if I have to see it, you have to see it too. All right, now that's off my chest, let's keep going. Next, we are going to cut out all of our pinned pieces onto the fabric we're using. I have two different fabrics that I'm using for this piece, or this garment, whatever. Now we are doing our pleats. We are going to put the small circled line on top of the big circled line. We are trying to iron out those pleats, but the fabric is terrible and it does not hold a pleat. So I ended up just basting them straight up on the first side and then on the second side I used clips to hold them in place. But we will set this aside for later. We are not sewing this just yet. We are sewing the pocket onto the front of the leg. I am basting this right now on the curved seam. Did the notches this time, helped a lot, makes sense why they have them there. Next we are taking this to the sewing machine. I'm taking my time with this one because the fabric on the bottom is terrible. Now we're adding the facing to the pocket, so the other side. I'm basting this, making sure that my notches are matched up and my little circles are matched up. Now, this one gets a spin on the sewing machine. And then I have footage of a zipper that I forgot to add in. So here is a close-up of the zipper seam, but don't worry, we're going to be doing the same thing on the other side, so you'll still get to see it. Here it is on the other side. I'm basting this down. I'm using a zipper foot to sew this one on. 
I am not going to explain how to use that because I don't know if I did it correctly. So please look up someone more competent on YouTube, but after you watch this video. Next, we are going to be sewing the little flappy bit that goes over the zipper. Here is the outline of what we are going to be doing. I basted this off camera, and now I'm going to sew it on the sewing machine just like everything else. Now, this was not the correct way to do it. The pattern was super confusing. I did not understand what was going on. So I did my very best, and it was absolutely not the correct thing to do. Anyway, we're going to be sewing the top of the yoke for our back of the pants. We're going to do this twice on the sewing machine, once with the wrong sides facing outwards and once with the right side facing outward to make sure that it lays completely flat against my hips. Now we are going to sew the inner leg seams together. I am trying to demonstrate this, but it's rather difficult when you're recording with the other hand. This one, just a simple straight seam, nothing to worry about, no curves, no nothing. This was nice. Alright, here's a tricky one. This is the crotch seam that we're going to be sewing. Now I started by basting this all together, and after basting it for like a hot second, I realized that that little zipper flap has come back to bite us in, I suppose, the crotch. So it doesn't fit together the right way. We're going to try to negate that by cutting a little bit of it and adding a little bit of a gather at the base of it, meaning where it connects in a place where you wouldn't see if you catch my drift. We'll see how this works out. I'm going to sew it and just cross my fingers and hope that my legs don't look lopsided. So I had to specify at the beginning of this video what culottes or perhaps culottes don't come from me in the comments. I don't know how to say words that I was referring to because they've actually gone through a lot of iterations over the course of history. They got their start in about the Renaissance period. They're actually the French translation for the English word for breeches. So they were actually less of wide leg pants worn typically by women and more of silken undergarments worn by uh, noblemen. They were less mid-calf, and they were actually cut off more right under the knee, and they were often fastened with belts or buckles. Now, these weren't cheap, and mostly just noblemen and aristocrats could afford them. So because the French were not that big on the aristocracy, culottes became a symbol of this the fat cats, you know? and revolutionaries became known as sans culottes and they would take to wearing trousers rather than the silken garment referred to previously. However, although the French revolutionaries will become our first culotte haters of history, the sentiment was not shared with all uh, military men. In the rest of Europe, culottes were a staple for a lot of military uniforms. They were often worn under stockings or under boots and they participated in several wars, including the Revolutionary War. Culottes as we know of them got their start in the Victorian era, fueled by the women's movement to not have to wear skirts all the time. So-called jupe culottes, or bifurcated skirts if you're trying to sound fancy, were a lot lower to the ground, they had a much lower hem, and they also often had a panel in between the two legs, which would make them look even more like a split skirt. Now, these articles of clothing uh, allowed women to be a lot more mobile and do a lot more activities, such as horseback riding, gardening, and biking. I actually have a pattern for an early style of split skirt, and I was going to make it, but I didn't really have the fabric to fit it, so if you do want to see me make it, I would like to make it, and perhaps I'll talk about more things. Please let me know in the comments. All right, back from that call to action. Now with this, the culotte hatred shifted from a hatred of the ruling class to a hatred of women doing anything that wasn't considered womanly enough. With the adoption of these type of clothing came an adoption of a more masculine style, and this left a lot of men with a lot of opinions very outraged. So, instead of a lack of culottes being a symbol of rebellion, the act of wearing culottes became a symbol of rebellion, as well as a symbol of utility and the freedom for women to do more things. All right, let's move our timeline forward. 1931 specifically, Elsa Schiaparelli, a designer rivaled only by Coco Chanel at the time, starts sporting culottes. 
In London is where she started to get some pushback for her fashion choices, specifically because she kind of refused to acknowledge culottes as a type of modified skirts. We have circled back to culottes being pants, and the general populace is not having it. One contemporary article cited culottes as being manly, with a hint of lesbianism, and although it was sad then, I kind of take that as a compliment now, and maybe even title my first stand-up special as it. Now, unfortunately, all the culotte hate was not confined to the press, and there was actually laws preventing women from wearing culottes freely in public. One French law stipulated that a woman must be holding the handles of a bicycle or the reins of a horse in order to be legally wearing culottes. Women were arrested for wearing them, which, to paraphrase Meatloaf, I would not do for love. All right, taking a break from that, we are going to base together the sides. We are almost done with our piece here. Sewing the sides now, another nice easy seam. Here's how it looks. Now we're going to do the waistband. I've added an interfacing to make it less floppy. And we're going to pin this. Once again, the pattern has eluded me. And I spent all this time pinning and trying to figure it out and folding it and sewing it. And it didn't work. So I have to rip the stitches out. I decided to throw away one half of the waistband and just fold it down and see how it looked. And it looked okay, I guess. We got there in the end, I suppose. But after pinning this, I'm going to sew it. I actually fold it over and sew it a second time, although I didn't record that bit. The 1960s. Although the criminalization of culottes has ended, the disdain for them has not dwindled. The reintroduction of culottes into the fashion world is credited to a 1916 show of a designer named Norman Norrell. Here, rather than being like a casual or sporty thing, culottes were fancy. Norrell, a fellow culotte enthusiast, wanted to show his love for this skirt pants abomination so much he made an entire suit line of them. Bless him, because the culottes actually started to work their way back into mainstream fashion with designers such as Twiggy including them in her lines. Now, here is where I put a little break in my script to rant about how, love, how much I love like Twiggy's fashion in general and mod fashion. Um, I know Twiggy being like the first supermodel of supermodels is kind of like, mm, is that great though? But I do love mod fashion and if you guys want to see me make anything of any sort, like the 1960s, mod specifically, please let me know. <laughs> I'm stuck at home and I'm looking for more things to sew. Anyway, the 1970s and 80s were actually a brief hiatus from the culotte hatred. That's refreshing, right? The 1970s loves for multiple piece outfits and bold looks allowed culottes to thrive and their swishy kind of relaxed quality didn't hurt. So culottes lived in peace in the 1970s and with the 80s came Lady Di who brought them back in full swing and this time not a casual look, not a chic look, but a powerful look. The chic and professional characteristics of culottes were also used to allow women to feel more masculine or more in place when transitioning their way into the workforce from a more traditional home setting. This is what I would classify as the peak of culottes, and after this point they kind of faded into the background until we see a small resurgence in the 2010s. Heidi Slimane, who looks nothing like I expected him to, but everything that his name implies used culottes to distance fashion from that sort of glamorous new romantic look towards a classier, if not more boring, way to dress. All right, we are basically done. It is unhemmed here, and technically it is the right length for short culottes, but once again, I have short legs. So we are going to hem it a little bit higher, and we are all done. I'm really happy with how these culottes turned out. Lord knows, I shed a few tears over them, and I learned to hate culottes, but they turned out okay. I have pants with pockets in them for the spring, and we are all done. Thank you for watching. Please tune in next time when I make a tennis skirt out of this fabric right here. Feel free to like or subscribe this video, or tell me what you thought in the comments, and I will see you next time.